Welcome everyone to another episode of Biz Talk, where we uh, we discuss things going on in the events industry. And I'm really excited here today to have Leon Winkler from uh, from Ubisoft. Leon, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's uh, always good to be able to talk about my passions, which is my work. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, it's there's nothing better than than having your passion and your work come oh, yeah. together. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those lucky people that managed to, to make their, their hobbies into their work. And now I've been doing that for 15 years. So it's, it's I'm feel oh, pretty I blessed. It. I love it, Leon. I love it. And I want to hear more about that. Um, today, we're talking to, to Leon about combining entertainment with the right amount of business. Because uh, obviously, you know, it, entertainment is fantastic, but it doesn't pay the bills. So how do we bring these things together. But getting mm -hmm. us started, Leon, can you tell us a little bit about your background, your story, and how you ended up making your passion or your, your hobby, your passion, your, your job? For sure. I mean, you, you said I only have two minutes for my intro, so I'll, I'll try to give the short version. Um, if it takes more than that, it's fine. Don't worry. Oh, dude, I mean, we'll be like five hours later and I'll still be talking. Um, oh. but, but like the, 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 the short version of, of, of where I come from and what I've done. So I've been working at Ubisoft for the last 15 years. Um, I did not just end up at Ubisoft, uh, also didn't plan to end up at Ubisoft, to be honest. Uh, actually, when I was in my early 20s, I started my own production company and produced TV shows for the local MTV channel here in Holland, which we did for two and a half years. Wow. Uh, since we had no money, no skills, no expertise, we had to do everything ourselves. Uh, and with that also hosting, uh, which was a very interesting, interesting thing to have to do. Uh, but through that, we got into or at least we got we got introduced to the to the video game industry in the sense that we had there was a release of, of Def Jam Fight for New York which early 2000s oh yeah I remember that I and remember since that game. it was a great game and since we made a hip-hop oriented tv show uh, that was a game that we want definitely wanted to cover so through that yeah. we found out that there actually was Dutch representation of EA uh, Electronic Arts in Holland and kind of like that planted the seed of like oh if this whole tv show ever kind of like collapses I might still have another uh, another industry that I could venture into. Anywho, indeed, maybe it was a kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I managed to completely collapse my TV show and bankrupt my company because I was young and stupid, as, as, as young and stupid people tend to do. Um, right. But managed to uh, finally graduate from, from college, from University of Amsterdam, uh, since I was kind of spending way too much time doing my whole TV show stuff. Uh, graduated from college, got my doctorate, was looking for a job, a little bit arrogant still because I was like, I did my TV show, I have a doctorate, everybody will give me a job. Uh, that didn't really happen. Uh, <laughs> I got my odd jobs, <laughs> odd jobs here and there. And then um, just this, this, this one day, I just saw an opening on this job website called Monster Board for a opening for a product manager at Ubisoft in Holland. Uh, they asked for someone with six years of marketing experience and a marketing degree, which I didn't have, but it was like, hey, I mean, it's worth the try. Um, so I applied and actually got rejected after my first interview, uh, basically telling they were telling me that I was too much sales and I'm really the right guy for the job. And I disagreed. So I kind of replied to their email, but saying like, well, appreciate the, the, the email, but I disagree on these and these and these and these and these and these points. And they invited me back. And now I'm here. Isn't that something? So yeah. <laughs> they said no, and you said no, 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 no. No, I mean, let me tell I, you why. I have not. I, I mean, it, it sounds very arrogant, but it, it was more like factually. I have. I mean, first of all, I had nothing to lose. I mean, I didn't have a job. Sure. I mean, I was like, I was bankrupt, and I was trying to like rebuild my career, or whatever. And they sent me an email where they said that I was more like sales oriented and not really marketing. And I was like, yeah, well, factually. Just looking back at what I did, I created the TV show from scratch. I created my own company with zero money, all these kind of things, which kind of like links to the foundation of what marketing is, creating something right. out of nothing, creating a brand, which we did. We were the most popular TV show at that time on that specific channel. And <laughs> through that, I apparently managed to convince them to invite me back. And I have been having a blast ever since. I, because I, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, I never expected to end up in video games. I never intended to end up in video games i was a gamer as a kid for sure i played hella games but i didn't think it was a career for me 
because first of all, I mean, I live in Holland. I mean, it's a small ass country. I mean, I never expected that there was any representation of the big video game companies out there right. in Holland. And even if they were, it's like, I was just this dude. It's like, why would they hire me? But they did. And I managed to create a career and build, uh, uh, managed to work my way up from product manager to PR and event manager Holland. And then at a certain point in time, I got a call from, from my MD, my managing director, that he wanted to have a conversation with me the next morning. And I thought I was going to get fired. So I was like, oh, shit. Uh, so the next morning, <laughs> I entered his office. He closed the door. I was like, oh, definitely going to get fired now. Um, but no, they offered, they offered me a position in Paris to work on the international events. And at first I thought that they just wanted me to be part of the team. Um, but it ended up that they wanted me to lead and reshape the team into what we've turned it into right now for the last seven, eight years. It's been, it's been a blur. I don't know. That's amazing. You know, yep. I love that story, Leon. And so a couple of things. One, uh, <laughs> just for the audience, just because you get turned down for that job, don't give up. No doesn't mean no. Respond. Be bold. Stand out. Right. So that's one. I mean, it, oh, I mean, no, I mean, no means no. I mean, but I, th I think it's, I think it's more in the just factually. I mean, it's like look at what they tell you, and if you disagree, you can always send them an email. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're going to get back, that you're going to get invited back or something, but. I factually disagreed. I was like, yeah, but this is just BS. This is just not true what you're saying about me. And I was like, yeah. okay, well, even if it's not going to be me in the end, I just want to set the record straight. That's right. Well, and I, I think that, I do think that people transitioning from owning their own business to working in, in corporate, you know, mm -hmm. global corporate, which is, I mean, growing like crazy. I, I do think that some of those small business owners struggle to get all of their experience across, right? Because you do everything. So like, mm -hmm. what do you focus on? I don't, I, I, I can't give you a book for well, my yeah. CV because that's what I need to give you. But it's actually, cool. I mean, I, I did an interview the other day where we talked about specifically that, where indeed I had this, I mean, I had experience. I had like, I created my yeah. own company and bankrupted my own company. It's also a skill. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, it was right. very, it was very difficult to translate that into a resume. And I remember <laughs> that was stupid. Uh, uh, one of the interviews that I did back in the day for my TV show was with this R&B singer called Keith Sweat. And I don't know why I thought it would be relevant for any interview with Ubisoft, but I remember putting somewhere in like on my resume that I did an interview once with these and these and these artists and Keith Sweat being one of them. Now you're like, okay, yeah, and? Well, <laughs> during the interview with Ubisoft, my first interview there, um, the one that I got rejected for, by the way, <laughs> uh, uh, I remember interview was very weird, just didn't really vibe that well. But at the end of the interview, walking out, <laughs> my, my hiring manager is like, oh, yeah, by the way, before you leave, I read in your resume that you interviewed Keith Sweat. I was like, yes. He was like, is he really such a pimp? Using these words, pimp. <laughs> that word in Dutch, even like using the English word in Dutch during a job interview, which was super weird. I was like, well, yeah, actually he was because he was more interested in all the female people around us. And the dude was like, oh, amazing. I love him. Such a big fan of Keith Sweat. <laughs> so you never know. You never know what's going to be good for it. <laughs> you never know. I love yep. it. <laughs> what a cool story. And then I, I also think it's interesting. You know, you and I, I think, are from the same generation. We didn't grow up knowing that video games was a career, right? That wasn't oh, like, man. that wasn't. No, no one I, talks about that. Dude, I mean, I mean they do now, but they did back, back then. Back in the day, it was like, if you played video games, you were the nerd. And I already was the nerd. I was like the, the unpopular kid in class. I mean, and I'm not, not complaining about that, but it was just, a, just, just the way it was. I was the unpopular kid in class, playing games, hanging out with the quote unquote nerds, being pretty good at math, <laughs> uh, that right. kind of stuff. And even though it's like, you see it as a hobby, you feel okay, this is a way to kind of like, disengage from reality, playing video games. Or for me, it was playing video games and watching movies because I'm a movie buff. And right. it wasn't until I remember it was, I think it was just the first or second year I was doing my TV show. And I had to do like research about the culture and whatever. And I remember reading one of those American hip hop magazines. And there was an interview there with this. And I'm still, if anyone knows who this dude is, I would love, love, love to get in touch with this dude. But there was this interview with this African-American dude who worked for EA or Activision or whatever, where he was like, right. I, where it was a short, like short interview where he was like, yeah, I do all their events and blah, 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 blah. 
And that was like 20 ish years ago that I read that. And even though at that time I wasn't like, oh, that's going to be my career. Hell yeah. I even do remember that it planted a seed in my head. It opened a door of possibility that, oh, I didn't even know you could also do that. And at that time right. I was doing like my, my TV show, I was doing some events. And at the time I thought, oh, that could be effing cool. But yeah. I never kind of like pursued that because I'm like, it's so far away from me that it would only work if you would live in the States. Right. But subconsciously it planted a seed that in the end, when it had the opportunity to come to Paris and take on events like E3 and Ubisoft Forward and Gamescom and China Joy, which I mean to go to what I actually do for Ubisoft, I'm director of international events, if you were wondering. So right. I basically lead the team that's responsible for the production of all of our major international events. And the last two years or a year and a half, it has been Ubisoft Forward, for, from which we've done three different editions. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I never thought I could end up doing that. I mean, I didn't know. It just kind of like, like it kind of happened. It just kind of happened. Kinda yeah, happened. it's 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 interesting. I only wanted to bring that up because yeah, I think you and I probably grew up similar. That it just wasn't a thing. Like, oh, well, no. I'm not a programmer. I'm not an artist, so I'm not going to work in in gaming. But it's such a huge industry oh, yeah. with needing all kinds of skills mm-hmm. more more than movies even. Oh right? yes, because it's all the stuff that you need for movies plus all of the other business stuff that they don't talk about and analytics mm-hmm. and all these other things. What a great industry. I love it. Oh yeah, um, but, that's, but, it, but that's the thing. It's like, and once you finally kind of like open Pandora's box of the game industry and just look inside of, oh my gosh, it's indeed, it is, you can be whatever you want to be in video games. We need from people indeed that program to event managers, to psychologists that, that, that think about, okay, what, how do people interact within the game? How does the AI interact with the actual people that play the games? All these kind of things or lawyers. It's like, it's, it's, it's such a, wealth of different careers that you can make in video games they're like wow this is something cool hence the fact that i stayed in there like, okay there, there's there's a future in this that's right that's right there's a future anyways 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 oh, yeah sorry I, yeah i, I digress <laughs> but, no, no, no this is perfect i loved all of that no regrets but event right so yes. you've been doing this for a long time and uh, you know ubisoft there you guys were part of all the big events but some big challenges over the last 18 months right so how, how much of those challenges are still kind of residual or are there some new challenges that kind of face mm-hmm. uh events for the gaming industry what are your I mean, thoughts i mean of course i i mean i don't want to downplay the pandemic it was terrible for everyone it still is i think we're still struggling with well with the pandemic we're in the midst of it Absolutely. Um, but i always look, try to look at challenges that get thrown on my path as a as a, as a way to grow and as a way to Look, look at things differently, change perspective. What happened when, when actually when the pandemic started, we were in Toronto working on E3 2020. It was February, 2020, we were in Toronto working on our physical E3 show. So we had calls with our right. agency, we were there with our production teams talking about all the cool stuff that we would build out at, at the convention center in Los Angeles. <laughs> and then we received the call, like, hey, it's not happening, it's not happening. February, we were, February, March, April, our show was in June. So we had to pivot and we had to pivot towards something. Okay, so we still need this platform where we talk about our new announces. What are we going to do? And it kind of like was a full circle moment where we're like, well, I used to produce a TV show. I mean, I can kind of like take that knowledge and do a pre-recorded show I knew that within some of our NCSA marketing teams, they were working on a concept that was called Ubisoft Forward, which was not the show that we have right now, but it was kind of like a trailer voiceover kind of show, just a monthly show that highlighted all the announcements that were coming up. And so we took the knowledge and the research that they did. We took some of my knowledge and vision, and we took all the other teams that worked on it and created this pre-recorded show and basically turned this challenge that we had into an opportunity to well, tell stories and okay, well, now it was pre-recorded instead of live on stage. Okay, cool. Right. And of yeah. course, of course, does it, I mean, yes, it is challenging. Of course, it, it, the, 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 the biggest challenge that we have is the face-to-face moment and interaction that we have with not only our communities where they can get to play the games and interact with their heroes in, in the gaming industry, but also with our business partners where they want to meet and greet, shake hands, wine and dine and, and see the new games. However, because we were forced into this and we had no choice, it also 
kind of like took away a lot of the bureaucracy that you normally have if you really want to kind of like change a change yeah. course. It was like, okay, we have to. It was like, okay, well, let's go, 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 go. One of the cool things that we rolled out that would have otherwise probably taken years to get approved and all these kind of things was our partnership with Parsec. Parsec is a oh, yeah. soft. Parsec is a software that allowed us to stream our games, our new games that were in production from our gaming PC that our offices or at home to influencers and media all across the world. So they could just pick up a controller and play the game that was streamed from our laptop or our PC. Right. And, and, and through that, we had the opportunity to get people to play our games, which one is, I mean, that's our main thing. We want to make sure we don't just want to talk and say that our games are great. No, try it out. And as you might know, I mean, back in the days, you used to have the demos that you would send out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, for the new games, it doesn't work like that because they need to be online. It's an always online world. So you, there are challenges. And when you have a physical event, you just build 300 pods, TVs with controllers and whatever. We couldn't do that now. So, but we still had the objectives to get people's hands on these games. So kind of through the pandemic and through the fact that we had to, we forced it was, we were forced into change and it worked well for us. And I think moving forward, looking to the future, we're going to probably take some of the learnings that we've had now with the last 18 months and see, okay, how would that mix with the future or the new normal of, of events? Right. And that's something that we're right in the midst of right now, though, thinking about, okay, so what's going to happen next year and a year after and a year after we don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, yeah, especially with um, new variants coming out, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's, uh, I can tell you a month ago, I was, I thought I saw a light at the end of the tunnel that <laughs> events were going to come back full on. And now I'm, now I'm scratching my head. Like, actually, I mean, we might still be virtual for mm, a little while. I, don't I mean, know. I think what the thing, think? the thing, I think humanity in general, we have the need, the urge to interact. I mean, it just, it, we need to that and in, in digital this kind of stuff is cool but it would be even cooler if we would be in the room together being able to also look each other in the eye and, and really get each other's energy even better in the video game industry where 99.9% .9 of all the experiences that we build are digital slash virtual it's even more important to have that face-to-face -face moment with your business partners but also with your community right. I mean it's it's what I've noticed in the, in, the, in the years that I've been doing these events, and it's especially the case with an event like Gamescom, a consumer event, where you can get to really interact with, well, the people that basically create your jobs, the fans, the, the players. It's super valuable for them, not only to meet us, I mean, who, I mean, who cares about us in that regard, but for also for them to meet each other at these kind of events and see the like-minded people, not just online, that's just one part but me right. actually meeting each other. And I remember, I mean, there's many stories of people that, that already like knew, knew each other online, right. met, up, met up at Gamescom, got married the next year. I've seen a few, I've, but, that's, but that's the cool thing. And that's yeah. why, why it's so important. Or just people that turn into best friends or people that just end up, I don't know, just going on like a world, world trip or like a world tour, these kind of things. And that's, it's so important. It's so important to have these physical touch points because it makes it real. It makes it, it whenever you can touch something, tangible experiences are always more, uh, uh, more important, more impressive than, than, than a virtual thing. Because I mean, you can watch a trailer online or you can play a game, two different things. Two different things. It's interesting, Leon, the way that you talk about those experiences, mm -hmm. I can, I can feel your passion for events. I can, I can feel that this actually, this is a thing that you're passionate about. I'm, I'm passionate about storytelling and, and, and that, that's one thing, storytelling. But the other end also creating experiences for people to forget about their drama in life, to basically in a, a way of escapism. Right. Because that's what people look for. I mean, for I think that's what people for a part look for in games. It's a way to escape their reality and become the king of the world in whatever game that you're playing. And I try to approach right. I try to approach our events in the same way. It's like, okay, we want we do this to make people feel good. It's not just a tool to sell our games. And of course, yes, in the end, yes, yes, yes. We were talking about it earlier. In the end, yes, business. We need to sell games. I try to focus on that the least of my time. Of course, in the end, we need to sell games. Yes, that's a given. 
But sure. how do you sell product? By getting people invested, getting people to care. How do you get people to care? Well, you can either scream from the tower how great you are, or you can let them experience it themselves and or like take them by the hand or like show them that, that you care about them. Give back. That's how I approach my events. I approach, especially these consumer events, as a way to give back to our community that created our job. And instead of selling them more, it's like, oh no, buy more. You already bought some of our stuff, but buy more. No, it's like, no, thank you. Come to our stuff and we'll give away free t-shirts and games and whatever. It's about that. It's about love in that regard. I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but it is. No, <laughs> don't apologize. This, right, is, okay. uh, this is what I love. This is what I love. Um, and yeah, story, storytelling, and you're right. You, we, uh, that, that is why we play video games. So I, 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 I love, I love video games. And uh, this is actually really interesting that my favorite game franchise of all time. And pretty much the only thing I have time to play these days is Assassin's Creed. Oh, thank so, you so much. I love Ubisoft. This is as far as storytelling. Uh, I, I think you guys have it nailed down. So, you know, hearing that you're passionate about telling stories, man, I, I, I mean, you, I mean, if, if you, since you're an Assassin's Creed fan, you remember the first Assassin, the first tower that you that you that you had to climb in. I think it was outside of Jerusalem in Assassin's Creed One. Oh yeah, the first time that you were like on the lookout tower, looking around, seeing that world. That was a legendary moment. I've only had that feeling a few times in in my life in regards of gaming experience. GTA Four was another one, or GTA Three was another one where I had that. The first time that you yeah. drive around Liberty City, you're like, oh my god, this is like revolutionary. There are only yeah. a few moments. So I'm very honored that I'm part of that kind of legacy of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that was amazing. That's an amazing game. That's amazing. Uh, and you know what? It's I don't get tired of it at all. It's every time a new one comes, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play it. I mean, I, I, I must admit, I, I, I've, I've lapsed a few episodes. But then when I got my, my PS5 earlier this year, Humble Flex, um, <laughs> I, 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 I picked up Valhalla and I was like, Oh, oh yeah, this is what I missed. It was, it was great. I I, yep, that's right. <laughs> the hell is great. I'm actually I'm still playing through it right now. And uh, Odyssey, Odyssey has been my favorite of of, of all. Minus number two, I, Ezio, Ezio, hey, Ezio, my, my Ezio, Aud Auditore di Firenze. <laughs> He's the king. Uh, anyways, I'm and now I'm digressing, right? I'm. I'm, it's, I'm it's, all, it's all it's all good. We're vibing. I told you, Jason. We're gonna vibe. That's right. That's right. Um, so, I mean, getting back to events, I, we have got about five, six more minutes yeah. here. Uh, and well, yeah, I think we should do this again sometime. Yeah, by, 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 by all means, you know, you know where to find me. <laughs> Absolutely. So where, where do we go from here? I mean, go, go, going forward, how, how should gaming companies adapt to this environment and reach these audiences? How do we continue to tell these stories with uncertainty? What do we do? Uh, I mean, I mean, who am I to ask? I mean, what, what do I know? I mean, I, 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 I just follow my heart and my passion. I think, how do we move forward with uncertainty? It's, it's to be, flex, be as flexible as possible because indeed you do not know. And I think we all, not just the gaming industry, but all of us event managers, we all want to go back to physical events. And I think that's what I mean, we will go. We will go back to that. We for sure will go back to something. It might not be exactly like it was in the past, but it will be a new way or shape of, of, of going back to live events. Now we can be like super anxious about what that might be. And it's understandable because we don't know, it's the unknown. Or we could look at it as an opportunity. Okay, right now we are basically pioneering and building the future of events with all the experience that we have, that we've gained or gathered in the last 18 months as an event industry. Right. All that knowledge, inject that to your strategies in the past and that's what I think the future of events will be. It's like, it will be a hybrid for sure. Right. But what that will look like exactly. And, and I don't know, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, I think the, the main thing to, to take away is that physical events will be back. Don't worry, you'll be able to shake hands with people again at a certain point in time, or at least give like fist bumps. But also realize that times change, communities change, events change. That's what we do. We build experiences and we have new, even, and that's one of the reasons why the fact that we went virtual this year is a good thing because it, it's allowed us to explore new tools of storytelling. It's like, okay, yeah. cool. So now it's not just face-to-face -face or through a video that we do live or whatever, live stage show, whatever. No, it's, we have all of these tools now. 
that we can use to create even better stories. Now, did we succeed, all of us? No. I mean, did I succeed in everything? No, absolutely not. But we at least, it was an opportunity to try out new things. And I think that's the thing that should drive you forward, like trying new things over and over again. And this is the most exciting time in that regards because, okay, <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But so, okay, we'll have to try new things. It's a real adventure. Seriously. Yeah, yeah it just, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, a, it's, yeah exactly. It's, a, it's, it's almost like a video game. I will, I will, I will. Almost. <laughs> I, I will say one, one, one silver lining from, from all this is that be, because like you said, some of these programs for digitization had to get pushed forward. They had to get pushed forward. Mm -hmm. Now I do think one thing we will see in these future events is a lot more people being able to participate digitally that couldn't participate live. Oh, yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, for instance, I, I'd love to go to, uh, to E3 every year, but sometimes around that time, I don't, uh, I don't have the cash to go, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or can't find a hotel or whatever, yep. whatever it might be. Um, and we, we, talk, we, we talk to a lot of, uh, of entrepreneurs that are, that are in Africa on this mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty tough for them to go, but it, yep. in, in this new age where there's a big part of it is still digitized, they can be a part of that storytelling, mm -hmm. even though they can't be there. Oh yeah, so for I, sure. But but the but the cool thing is that this, the year taught us is that where back in the days before 2020, 90 percent of all the budget went to that physical event, the build out for that physical event. That's now right. it has shifted towards well, 100 percent to virtual, which <laughs> also creates the infrastructure for for these people that kind of come to the physical events in the future to feel more engaged than they've have in the past. Because back in the days, I mean, yes, our focus was okay. We have 50, 100, 500,000 people here on site. That's our main right. focus. And forgetting about the millions of people that you have at home. Yes, okay, yeah, we have a video for them. They can watch a video, sure. But there's so much more you can do. And now we've kind of like, we're trying to invent, okay, what is all of that? How can we fully leverage and embrace, em embrace these platforms that we have to further our way of telling even better stories or making our stories that we tell more engaging instead of just us talking. Now we can have a conversation or we can actually co-create a story with our community or with our stakeholders. Oh man, yeah. so many cool things. I love that. I love it. And like you said, there's still a lot of it that needs to be discovered and figured mm -hmm. out. And, you know, so you're, I think your job's going to be pretty exciting over the oh, next yes. year, 18 oh, months. Yeah. <laughs> oh heck. I mean, I mean, honestly, it has been exciting every, every day so far for the last 15 years, <laughs> every day I go to the, I mean, not now to the office, but every day I go to work and like, <laughs> so every now and then I still have to pinch myself like really it's like really they they, they, yeah. they chose me to do this okay well shit here I am here I am I love it well Leon thanks so much we're we're, we're right at our time this was awesome I had so much fun well, I'd love you. to do it again let's figure it out yeah sure uh, any any last thoughts you just want to leave with the audience anything you want to say to them directly you rule you're going to be all right don't worry I know you're all very anxious at home and like, oh my God, where's the world going to? The situation is very tense in the world nowadays, but it's going to be all right. People will figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. Chill out. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> for I sure. I appreciate it. And no thanks problem. for being here. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah, for sure, man. For okay. sure. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>